cool on everyone tech Tosh coming at you guys with another video this is a quick little video for all my nerdy dudes that like to overclock their pcs now this is something that i had to dig deep a lot of forms i had to read just to find specifically what i needed to do to fix this issue that happened if you're unaware windows has been coming up with a couple updates i don't know when it first started but with these windows 10 updates at least uh, i'm not sure about windows 8 or windows 7 but with the windows 10 updates they have put a limiter on your overclocking abilities specifically with your cpus so I had to figure out what I had to do to bypass this. I was kind of hesitant on even touching it and even trying to do it, but I did a little bit of research on why I wasn't getting the overclock speeds that I was overclocking my CPU to. So in my BIOS, I would overclock manually to have my CPU hit about 4.1 uh, gigahertz or hertz, whatever it is. The settings would line up perfectly. It would show that it was overclocking it. I would have all, all the voltage and change specifically to where I wanted. So what would happen is the voltage would hold but the cpu clocks wouldn't hold so when i would run programs such as cpu z i would check to see what the overclock was hitting and it wasn't hitting it it was hitting the stock speeds which was 3.4 uh, max out to 3.8 i was trying to hit 4.1 and it was just not doing it it just wouldn't even try to hit it no matter what I changed the voltage to, no matter what any of the settings were. So I was kind of like, what, what's going on? Like, why can't I do any overclocking? So after reading a couple forms and uh, doing a lot of research with that, I found out that with the Windows 10 updates recently, within the past couple months, it's throttled your uh, CPUs. And that's due to security vulnerabilities they're talking about and all types of issues that they try to say that's wrong with it, which might be true, might not be true, but for us geeks out here, we like to be able to overclock our PCs to the power, to the full extent that it can do. Uh, and I'm one of those dudes who dabbles into it here and there. I'm not a, I'm not gonna say an expert in any kind of way. So anything I say from here, this is on your own risk if you wanna do it. I'm not telling you to do it. I'm not responsible if you do it. This is just some an experience that I had and I figured I'd relay it to you because it wasn't very accessible as far as information, especially on YouTube. So I figured I would update a video for you guys and put it out there for people who did want to dabble into overclocking their CPU if they're having the same issues with Windows 10. Now, like I said, I'm unaware of any other type of Windows other than Windows 10. I happen to come across the forum, which I'll link that forum to you guys if you guys want to dive in on it. It was just a random uh, user off, I believe Tom's Hardware was the actual site I found it off of. I, like I said, I did a lot of research looking for what the issue was and I found out specifically it was a Windows 10 update that caused this to happen. But not a lot of people knew how to bypass the uh, issue here. So I'm gonna show you exactly what needs to be done here. So like I said, it's about 15 steps. First thing you have to do is open up a file manager. Once you open up file manager, you're gonna take that over to system 32. Scroll down to system 32 right here. Then from system 32, you're looking for the file, file name MC update underscore genuine intel dot DLL. I'm assuming most of it's alphabetical, so. So as you can see, my file is already modified. So the main thing that you're trying to do is you're trying to change the name of this file right here. You want to change the name of that so that way it is not being read or authorized to run on startup. So in order to do that is you just rename it. I did dot BAK. That's what the form indicated. You could put old dot old. But yeah, so when you what you need to do is right click on it. You're going to have to click on properties. So all mine might be a little bit different because I already have admin privileges. So you pretty much need to get admin privileges on this file. You, you may be admin on your name, but you need to be able to do it on this file you trying to change it it probably won't work most definitely probably won't work until you do these steps so then you're gonna have to go to the security tab from the security tab you're gonna go to advance and then from there you're gonna have to click on this should be at the near top of the screen and you're gonna have to click on change and like I said yours is gonna look a little different because I've already added admin privileges to be able to change the file name but mine is gonna look a little different than yours once you get the admin privileges once you click on change what you need to do is enter the object name is the name of the user on that on the uh, admin account so my PC name is Tosh that's just all I had to do is type Tosh what you're gonna do here is type in your name my PC username is Tosh you're gonna click check names and then from there, it's gonna change it. You'll see the thing change to a different line of what your actual username should be at the end. So mine added Tosh at the end. So it should be computer name with a slash username. After that, you're gonna hit okay like I did. Now back at the advanced name, 
at the advanced settings tab you're going to click the add button now once you click the add button you're going to click select the principal and you're going to do the exact same thing you're going to type in the name of the user for the admin account which like i said mine is tosh yours is obviously going to be what yours is and then you're going to do the same thing and click ok once you type in your name once you do that you're going to want to you're going to be able to click full control from there you're going to click full control like that and then click ok then once you're here you can click OK again. You're about to change the permission settings on system folder, yada, yada. And talking about security issues, you're going to click yes. Now from here, you should be able to rename the file. So you're going to click OK. You're going to right click on the file that we are initially changing. And like I said, I got mine changed to .bake. You can do the same thing or you can do however you feel like you want to do it. I recommend just doing .capital B-A-K uh, or dot old capital old and then you'll should you should be able to change the file name so what this does is this is the file that throttles your cpu overclock so because you already changed the name when you start up windows it's not going to have that throttle anymore so whatever program you use to overclock your cpu i recommend using bios and doing it manually if you know how to do that like i said i'll show you right here some of the applications i use so you can use like cpu hw monitor this is a good free program you can download this this is monitors everything from your cpu gpu temps to you know everything about your pc so we'll go over here to my core clock speeds you can see right here all my clock speeds because i got them synced to all cpus it goes to four point it says four zero nine nine that's four point one that's what my clock speeds are running at now we'll go to cpu z this is going to show you where my core volts that at so i got the 6800k so i got my i could probably bring this down a bit uh but i got it set to 1.3 volts this is this cpu is a little hard to overclock um it does run hot and the voltage usually runs high if you want to get it anything over 4.0 so just be wary of that like they said it's the silicon valley lottery whatever they talk about so it's going to be it's going to vary per cpu so whatever you're going to be able to run your cpu at may be different what i'm going to be able to run mine at but as you can see core speed goes to 4.1 pretty much what it is um if you guys want a video on how to overclock or how i overclocked my cpu just let me know i'll, I'll show you step by step what i did for my cpu and you can kind of use that as a baseline to overclock clock your cpu if you got the same one or if you have intel or whatnot but yeah i highly recommend using these programs right here uh hw monitor i'll link that down below for you guys to be able to use that to monitor your cpu and gpu if you do overclock them see what temperature they're running at and see if you're actually getting your clock speeds as far as what i use to test out my um cpu so that way i can see that it runs at 100 is adida 64 extreme that's what i'm using to test my cpu to make sure i'm getting the speed that i'm getting before i change the name of that file i would be able to change my settings within my overclocking in my bio settings it would show that it was changed and it saved but yet when i would run this program it wouldn't hit those speeds so you got to make sure that you have a program that shows exactly what speeds your uh, cpu is actually hitting what i'll have to do what you'll do is go to motherboard cpu go to tools system stability test and then from here you'll be able to stress test whatever you want to stress test so i Obviously, we're talking about a CPU here. So you would select, have make sure this is all selected. Everything should be by default once you click on that. And then you would click start. And you can still monitor everything in here. So as you can see, original clock speed for my CPU is 3400 megahertz. Uh, what else is useful in here? So as you can see, I got the 6800K. Clock speed's 3.4. Uh, their stock overclock speed is 3.8. So you might get that maxed out at 3.8. But there's people that actually got this to 4.5. Uh, I'm not going to push it because the voltage really does have to go a lot higher to reach those for most CPUs. But like I said, if you go to these programs that are free, like CPU Z, I'll have it all linked down below. As you can see, I'm hitting my core speeds. 4.9 uh, CPU throttling is using it at 100%. And what you're going to want to do with something like CPU HW monitor. Now, when you're running this stress test, the number one things you want to look at is your temperatures. You want to make sure that your temperatures don't exceed over 70 degrees. If it exceeds over 70, then you're going to have to bring your, your clock speed down or either get more fans, make sure your water cooled. If you're going to be pushing your CPU, uh, I am water cooled. So I usually don't, as you can see, my max temps for the time being were 62 degrees Celsius. And then the next thing you want to kind of monitor is the actual clock speeds and your voltage. As you can see, everything's being used at 100% and my core clock speeds are hitting 4.1.
so yeah that's pretty much it it's very easy if you're familiar with overclocking then you don't even need all this information the only thing you needed to know was how to rename that file name that was the main thing i kind of wanted to get out to you guys so hopefully that helped for you guys if you have any questions do comment down below i'll do what i can to help like i said this is i'm running windows 10 on the latest update i believe but yeah like i said that's it guys if you guys have any questions do comment down below if i was able to help you out and this all worked out perfectly for you hit that thumbs up for me it does help the channel that's gonna be it guys hopefully i helped out y'all stay nerdy i'm out peace